The Day State Wolverine 303 has got people talking. Some say it's awesome. Others point out that in order to own this work of Dr. Frankenstein in the UK, you need to have a firearm certificate. And if you have an FAC, why on earth would you bother about air when you can have powder? Well, today we want to find out if this beast is worth howling about. Instead of putting it in the hands of an air gunner, we're giving it to a rifle reviewer who hasn't been air gunning since he was in shorts. Well, the last time I shot an air rifle, I was 15 years old. And then as soon as I get my hands on a 2-2 rimfire, I saw the light and that was it. And that's the very last time, so that's 35 years ago. Uh, and now I'm faced with a 30 caliber air rifle, which is brilliant. So I'm looking forward to this. Tim certainly likes the look of the day state, but before we see if it does the job, what about applications? Oh. To put it bluntly, what's the point of it? Quite a few plus points to the 303 uh, air rifle. Beyond 150 yards, these are very, very safe. The pellets, they just fizzle out and very, very low ricochet. So very, very inherently safe, soft, malleable pellets. Secondly, the ammunition's a wee bit cheaper than, uh, than the, than, than the uh, two to rimfire. And thirdly, there are some police forces who actually are steering people towards an FAC air rifle because they feel it's safer than a 2.2 or a 1.7 HMR. The biggest worry for Tim is animal welfare. Not the fuzzy kind peddled by the antis. Tim wants to see his animals drop to the shot and he knows his rifles will do exactly that. If you are going to kill an animal, make sure you kill it with plenty of power. But air rifles have moved on an awful lot over the last 35 years, so therefore we need to look at these uh, these types of air rifles again and see what they are capable of. So Tim is willing to give the Wolverine the benefit of the doubt. However, he wants to do a quick couple of comparison tests between his 2.2, a 1.7 HMR and this 303. First up, penetration. We've got five bits of wood here, they're about 15 millimetres wide. Let's see how deep the bullets travel into the wood. So the 1.7 has gone through 60 millimetres plus of wood. The 2.2's gone through uh, 45, say 50 millimetres. And the 303 Wolverine's gone nearly through 30 millimetres of wood. What that tells me is the, is the Wolverine, the 303, has a lot better lockdown uh, power than the actual 2.2. The 2.2 with a rabbit tends to go straight through a rabbit, whereas a Wolverine Actually, I expect we actually may well stop actually in the rabbit itself, which is very, very safe. And I expect it will knock the rabbit over a lot better than the 2-2 room far. Next, let's look at accuracy. Here are some targets he has prepared earlier. Comparing the rim fires to the 303 Wolverine, this is a 1.7 HMR, 17 grain bullet. At 50 yards, we achieved about a 0.6 of an inch uh, grouping. These are very windy conditions today, so it's not the best of conditions for check the grouping. The 2-2 rim fire, a 40 grain bullet. We achieved about one inch grouping in 50 yards, so that's quite respectable. The 303 Wolverine, in fact, we got here, we've actually got 10 shots here. It's, it's very, very windy. And uh, whilst we got two slight flyers, most of the shots went in the middle there. So I think as the day went on, the actual Wolverine improved quite a bit. So I'm very happy with the accuracy of the, the 303. So far, the Wolverine seems to pack a punch and it's pretty accurate, delivering all that energy where it counts. But what about the real thing? Well, Tim has a couple of myxomatosis sufferers that we can use for the last test. First up, it's the 2-2. Then the 303. This is the rabbit shot with the 2-2 the rimfire. We've got a, an entrance rune there. It actually comes straight through. You just see that. Very standard for a 2-2 at about 50 yards. But uh, the impact actually, the, the rabbit actually moved quite a bit, so I was quite surprised on that. But that's fairly normal um, penetration exit um, wound for, for, for a rabbit. On the 303, once again, we've got an entrance wound there, but it's actually come out, actually come out the other side. But what was interesting is that uh, the rabbit didn't actually move, the, the pellet went straight through it. I would have thought that um, with the knockdown power of the, of the 303, I was expecting this rabbit to actually perhaps just fall over the back, but uh, it, actually, it actually stayed still and the bullet went straight through it. So interesting observation, nothing scientific about that, but it's just interesting to see how uh, the, a, a rabbit reacts to a, a heavier bullet. But in this situation, it just goes straight through it. So I think we need to do, next thing to do is go out in the field at night time 
and knock a few bunnies over and see actually what happens uh, through the 303. OK, Tim fires up the beast, his now infamous V8 rabbiting vehicle. It does twice as many miles to the gallon as the Daystate does to an air fill. All eyes are on the Wolverine tonight, and to start with Tim's friend Matt will be shooting with Tim driving and lamping. Rabbit number one is hit hard and drops. A good start, but how is that pellet behaving? Just uh, shot, shot a rabbit about 35 yards away with the uh, 303. We see the entry wound here, it's gone straight through the, through the front shoulder. Which is, and at the moment, we can't find any exit wound whatsoever. So I think what we do, we get the knife out and have a quick look inside the uh, chest cavity and see if there is uh, anything actually in there. The pellet's actually gone through the rabbit. In fact, we've had a closer inspection and it's actually gone through the other side. So this, in this occasion, the, the um, pellet went straight through the rabbit at about 35 yards which is slightly surprising because it's actually got, it's taken the shoulder out and I would have thought that uh, the pellet would have perhaps mushroomed a bit more than that but it's actually gone straight through the shoulder and straight through the chest cavity and out the other side um, but it was an instant kill so it's a, a job done. As we move across the farm Tim spots a fox, not an animal he'd choose to shoot with the 303 but thankfully Matt has also packed his 243 just in case. The animal is on the move, but has one last glance back in our direction. The vixen drops. Fortunately, actually, as ever, the foxes tend to, if they're running away, they always have a last look. And they looked around in front of this tree here, and uh, we managed to, to shoot her. Um, we're using tonight on, on foxes 75 grain VMAX, going out about three and a half feet per second. And we like the VMAXs because they do expand very, very quickly, fragment and causing huge, huge trauma to the body and that stops the animal straight away. It's, it's instant uh, death and that's what we're trying to achieve here. The rabbits aren't playing tonight. The ones we do see are far too far for the day state. However, before calling it a night, this bunny provides a nice close shot. Here we go, we had a rabbit not very far away, I think about 15, 20 metres away. And uh, once again, we've got quite a large entrance wound, but on the on the other side of the animal, now on this, on this occasion the, the uh, pellet went straight through the, the neck, so it's a great shot by Matt. And um, okay, yes, there we go. So the, the pellet's actually passed through the neck and actually out of the lower part of the jaw, which is uh, slightly surprising because you've got some hard neck. Um, bone tissue there and also down the bottom of the jaw here, I can feel it now, and that's all very hard bone and that pellet's actually gone straight through and out the other side. Um, I would have thought a, a, an air rifle pellet would actually would have um, mushroomed out and actually stopped if not just just perhaps caused quite a big exit wound but there's nothing there so it's actually gone straight through. We haven't had the volume of rabbits we'd hoped for this evening, but Tim's certainly got a feel for this rifle. So, the big question is, would he consider the Wolverine as a serious pest controlling contender? I, I suppose I've got to look at it from a, a person who likes the smell of gunpowder. It performed, we shot I think th uh, three or four rabbits, and every single time the, the pellet went straight through the, the animal. And on the two occasions, didn't actually have, but we didn't actually get a, um, a complete kill straight away, which is slightly concerning. Um, if it had been a 2-2 rimfire, I think, I think on most of those occasions, I would expect that rabbit to be dead. If I had an HMR, one time an HMR, it would be definitely dead because of the explosive nature of the bullet. It's a beautifully built air rifle, beautiful bit of wood here. But after a night's out shooting, I think I can stick with my 2-2 um, rimfire or my one seven HMR. But it's been a very, very interesting night out with the 303 Wolverine. It's not for Tim, but it is an exciting addition to the world of field sports. It's a calibre feared by enemies of the British Army right up to when NATO introduced the limper wristed 556. And thank goodness there are British companies out there who are working to revolutionise the sometimes staid old world of air guns. For more information about the Wolverine and the Daystate range, go to daystate.com.